You guys are probably wondering what this is. Well, today we're going to do a full review on the iWalk 2.0. What's going on guys, Ryan here. Today I'm going to be doing an in-depth review on the iWalk 2.0, so let's jump right in and get a closer look. So as you can see, the quality of this product is very, very good. I picked it up from somebody on OfferUp for about $50, but they retail online for about $150. And the reason I got this product was mainly because I needed a way to get around besides crutches and besides the knee scooter that would allow me to be hands-free. And the iWalk 2.0 does that. It's very, very secure. I feel very, very safe wearing it. Um, it's durable. The material that's used for this product is very, very strong. And you know the company put a lot of thought and effort into making this. So I currently have it at the highest setting. Uh, I am six foot four. The cushion right here is very, very soft. If you do have sensitive skin, I would suggest getting some kind of cushion or memory foam to add onto this. Because if you are standing for long periods of time, your knee will uh, start to get sore in this area. So each strap has two parts. The first buckle, okay, is gonna be your tightening buckle. This is gonna be used once you connect the plastic piece to the connector on the side. You use this gray piece to tighten up the strap, like so. So now it's very, very tight and short length. The black buckle has a strap through the padding. You use that for the length around your foot, your knee, and your back of your foot. So this top, this top piece is gonna be used for my thigh. This strap at the, uh, in the bottom is going to be used for my knee, and the strap in the back is going to be used to support the back of your leg. In the front, you see that you have a handle. The reason you have this handle is for balance. As you first start using this product, getting around is definitely a learning curve. It's not your regular step forward and walk. You do have to lift your leg up some, because if you do not, the padding on the bottom will scrub across the floor and you may stumble. So there are two knobs on the top of the device. Loosen them and tighten them to adjust the width of your thigh. The reason you have these is so that you have a very secure grip. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get this product is to adjust everything to your size. I purchased this from a about five foot seven, five foot eight uh, guy, and obviously it did not fit me when I first tried it on. Things that you can adjust are again the thigh piece right here with these two knobs. You can adjust the height of where you want this piece to be. My suggestion is to get it close to the groin as possible. Uh, reason is that if you have it lower on your thigh, it will tend to sway a little bit. You won't have as easy of a stepping motion. This bottom piece is adjustable. You can make this pad go shorter all the way to the knob, or you can make it go all the way to the very last setting, which is where I have it at. And again, this thing is a lifesaver. The reason I like this product, number one, you're hands-free. I can walk around the kitchen. I can walk around my room. Very easy mobility, and I'm able to grab things with both hands instead of having to crutch around and stop, place something down, pick it back up, move a little bit. That process gets very tedious. And also this is gonna help me get back to starting to work again. And number two would be that it's made out of high quality material. Um, I know it's not gonna break. The people at Iowa definitely put a lot of thought and effort into making this design and making this uh, product very safe and secure. And pro number three would be definitely, you don't have to get any kind of armpit pain or hand pain from crutching around 24 seven. I didn't enjoy it and I know you guys don't enjoy it either. So right now I'm gonna show you guys how the straps work. It can be a little confusing when you first get it, but the black buckle is gonna be the length of the actual strap. And the gray buckle is gonna be the tightening mechanism. And then you have your clamp here, which connects to this little piece right here. I've used this a couple times already, so I can get my balance pretty easy, even though it's not, not set up. But what I would suggest if you're first starting out is definitely grab a chair and use this as your support while you're balancing. So the first thing to do is to make sure you have your width of your thigh lined up correctly. Again, you can use the top silver knobs. Make sure these are very, very tight. So when you measure up, making sure it's almost to your, pretty much up in your groin area. When you first get it, Make sure the straps are all the way as far as they can. You're gonna go under and wrap around 
And what I would do first is definitely just connect it. Just get used to that connecting piece. So now that it's connected, you're gonna take the black piece of the buckle, turn a little bit for you guys. Take the black strap and just tighten it up. So as you can see, the black piece is very secure around my thigh. It's not going anywhere. The silver piece has a strap to it. This is gonna be used for your tightening mechanism. It has a piece of Velcro on the end, so what you're gonna do, just tighten it. So now, it's not going anywhere. What you do, you pull it over, there's a piece of Velcro, it stays right there. So now, even if I'm trying to get out, it's not, I'm not going anywhere. The next strap's down to my knee, and I'll be going over that one next. So right here you have your knee strap. This piece has a very large piece of foam that's gonna be wrapping around the back side of your knee with that sensitive skin. So I wanna make sure that you have this very, very well padded. I'll take this off when you first get it. Again, this one has been used, so this strap is, is a bit wrinkly. When you first get it, take the black strap, loosen it all the way. Make sure the gray piece is loosened as well. So you have the black straps fully extended. What you're gonna do, put the pad on, like so. Take the strap, you're gonna wrap it around and secure it to the buckle. Now it is secure on the buckle. Next piece, black buckle first. I'm gonna tighten it all the way. Make sure it's tight. Make sure your knee is pretty much solid to the front of this device. Take the silver locking mechanism, tighten that down, Velcro it over. Now I am very set up and secure. Last strap's gonna be the back strap. When you first get it, you're gonna loosen that back buckle all the way. You're gonna wrap it around, secure it to the mechanism. Take the gray piece with the strap, tighten it down, Velcro it back. And there you go, that's how you put on your iWalk 2.0. So right now I'll demonstrate how I get around the house using the iWalk 2.0. You have two ways of moving around. One would be absolutely hands-free. Two would be having your hand on the handle and lifting it as you walk. So I've had this for about over a week now and it's pretty easy to get around now that I'm used to it. So when you first get this device and you set it up correctly, first way to walk around is definitely holding your hand onto the device. What I would do is definitely take a step first with your uh, non-injured leg, take a step first with this, then bring it back. First, bring it back. This is gonna get your momentum going forward. Again, turning around, holding onto this device. That's how I would get around your very first time. Again, as you can see, when I'm walking, I do have to lift my, I'm, I am lifting up. I am lifting up on this side to get around. Because if you do try to walk, see this, it's gonna scrub across the floor. So remember, when you are walking, lift and step. Lift and replace. And turning around. Always turn with your injured leg on the inside of your turn. It's much easier this way. So once you get used to walking around with the eye walk with your support, with your hand support, you can kind of walk around hands free. This is how I get around now. Taking full steps. Inside turn. Still doing that. Walking around. One thing you have to remember is that you do have a leg behind you, so your turning radius must be much bigger. Because we're so used to turning around only having this amount of space, you, have to re you can't forget that you have the back of your leg sticking out. So to demonstrate me walking around hands-free, I'm holding the camera right now, walking around, I'll walk into the kitchen. So again, it's definitely a learning curve. You're definitely gonna get sore on the left side of your foot or left side of your leg. Um, it does look like I have a prosthetic leg. It does look like I have a peg leg. That's just the price to pay for having a hands-free way to get around. And I am much quicker than walking around with crutches, I would say. It's definitely a way to get around much more efficiently. Um, I do have a knee scooter that I use as well, um, but this is much more of a active person's alternative way to get around. Another thing I forgot to mention, when you do get this, practice on flat ground and practice inside. 
that's the best way you're gonna get better on how to balance with the eye walk, with your hand support. Um, going upstairs or on uneven surfaces is very, very challenging. Um, I've only been doing upstairs, walking up and down. I'll show you guys that right now. Practice on flat ground first. It's gonna make things much easier for you in the long run. Once you get your balance, I will start trying to do stairs or on uneven surfaces outside. There's two ways to eye walk up the stairs. One is with obviously the hand support. Two would be with the railing support. How to walk upstairs? Definitely dominant leg, non-hurt leg first. So you come up to the stairs, first leg up. Boom, one step one, lift the leg up. And that's, your, that's the way you get up. It's not like your normal step forward because you're gonna hit that bottom step. And you're not gonna be able to go anywhere. You're gonna fall forward. So take these steps one at a time, step forward, raise the eye walk. Step forward, raise the eye walk. But again, you can hold something, you can hold a thing of coffee, you can hold your phone, you can hold uh, your computer if you're going back downstairs. It makes things going up and down with only one trip much easier. And see right there, I'm trying to go too fast and I stumbled. Take it one step at a time. So going down the stairs is a whole different ball game. I'm still learning how to go down the stairs. I've had this for over a week now. Since I am so tall, I have to kind of turn my eye walk this way. Reason is because the steps are too steep and my back of my leg is hitting the, uh, the top step as I come down. So what you're gonna do on this way going downstairs is eye walk first, then your dominant foot. So this is, I would definitely hold on to a railing or the support from the eye walk handle. Step down first. And that's how you're gonna have walk down the steps. Step down. Again, this way is much, much slower. Definitely have a railing for somebody to hold on to with you. And see how my foot is constantly put to the side. The reason you don't go down this uh, front leg first is because this is very uncomfortable. This, I don't have any balance. I'm on my tippy toes. So this is why you bring this down first. And that's how you want to walk down. So that's my review on the iWalk 2.0. I'll leave a link of this product in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.